Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now, by this time, you should understand all about neurons. So you should be clear with the structure of the neuron, the way they perform, they do their job. So everything should be clear about neuron. But the question is, is nervous system all about neurons only? For example, initially in the very first few slides, I, I gave you examples of a person touching a hot cup of coffee and then immediately taking his hand back. So in that case, I told that it is the brain who is sending the information or sending the instruction to the muscle cells to behave like that. So by now we discussed only neurons that how neurons will carry that information which the sensory organs have experienced to the brain. But what about brain? What does the brain do? So what are the other parts of the nervous system? Neurons alone will not be able to do the job. So you need some parts in the nervous system which can think, which can actually instruct, which can actually interpret things. So neurons will only help in conduction. They will only help to carry the information from one part to another. But who is actually the deciding, who actually has the deciding power? So for that we will have to talk about the other parts of the nervous system. So let us now understand the different types of nervous system present in human beings. The entire nervous system in human beings that is divided into two types. So let us talk about the types of nervous system. Now in humans the nervous system is divided into two broad types. The first is the central nervous system which is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. So brain and spinal cord forms the central nervous system and the next one is the peripheral nervous system which is often abbreviated as PNS and it contains, it is composed of all the nerves which connects the central nervous system to all other parts of the body. So there are basically two types of nerves which form the peripheral nervous system that is the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. So it, cranial nerves because it is derived from the word cranium which is a part of the brain. Spinal nerves from the word spinal cord. So these nerves are associated with brain and spinal cord. That is they are associated with the central nervous system. So the nerves of the peripheral nervous system will actually connect the brain and spinal cord to rest of the body. So now we will try to understand these parts of the nervous system in detail. That is what is the structure of the brain, what is the function of the brain and how does it work. Similarly, we will talk about the spinal cord also and the peripheral nerves. So let us start our discussion with brain. So let us talk about brain now. Brain is the coordinating center of the body. So the master control you can say. The entire control is uh, in the hands of brain. So anything and everything that we do is decided by the brain. By the brain. Let us take a very simple example. Now suppose you are appearing for your exams. This is how the brain looks like. Just have a look at it. It is so complex my word. Right. So we will talk about the different structures and the different uh, small, small parts of the brain in detail. This brain is made up of around 10,000 million neurons. Just imagine the number of neurons present in the brain. There are these many neurons present there. Now, as I said, whatever we do is decided by the brain, which weighs around 1.3 kg. So it is not that heavy, but at the same time, yes. All your intelligence, all your memory, all your th uh, thinking power, everything is situated in the brain. Let us take a very simple example. Suppose you are appearing for your exams. So you look at your question paper and then you write the answer. So how do you write the answer? When you read the question, you think about the answer that what should be the right answer. So who thinks it for you? It is your brain who thinks it. So inside your brain there are certain centers. So there is one center which is for um, vision. Vision in the sense it is your eyes uh, which, sees, which sees something. But it is your brain which interprets what are you seeing. For example you see an object. 
you just see that object an image of that object is formed on the retina of your eye but how do you know if that object which you are seeing is a pen or it is an animal or it is a human being or what it is so that interpretation is done by the brain similarly when you read the questions in your examination your brain first interprets what is the question the brain understands the question and then the brain tells what should be the answer and then that information is sent to the respective muscle cells so that they can do their job so a lot of coordination is involved between many different organs but the decision control is with the brain so the brain is the one who decides so let us try to understand the structure of the human brain so we will try to simplify and then try to understand what is the brain made up of first of all the covering of the brain now brain being such a critical thing in our body it needs to be well protected and for that purpose it has a covering of the skull so the skull is a bony structure that ensures protection to the brain so bony structure the bones are hard and rigid enough to provide good protection so that is the skull so here you can see this covering of the brain this thing which you see that is the skull so we, we already discussed about the bones which form the skull right the cranial bones and the facial bones so we discussed all that in the previous lesson now the skull houses the brain and also the sensory structures for example the eyes ears nose they are also located in the skull so the skull is can be divided into two parts that is the cranium and the mandible so which is the cranium this portion is the cranium and the front portion or the, this portion is considered as mandible so this part is mandible and this portion is cranium it is made up of tw total 22 bones out of which 8 are cranial bones and 14 are facial bones so the facial bones are present somewhere here and the cranial bones are present somewhere here now i am not going to discuss about the cranial and the facial bones again because i have already discussed them in the previous lesson so if you want to know more about them you can refer the lesson on locomotion and movement then the next thing about brain is the meninges so what are meninges these are three layers of protective tissue or membrane which cover the brain so uh, skull is the bony covering outside inside the skull there are three layers of tissues for additional protection to the brain so what are these and these three layer tissue are known as meninges so what are the three layers let us have a look at the three layers okay so what is the purpose as i said to ensure to ensure protection now what are those three layers so the three layers are dura mater so these are the three layers dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater so these are the three layers of the meninges so dura mater is the outermost layer that is this layer the green colored layer that is the dura mater the next layer is the arachnoid that is the middle layer which is yellow in color and the innermost layer is the pia mater so from here this pink color starts so that is the pia mater and the outermost thing which is present here this is the skull right so the dura mater is the outermost and pia mater is the innermost and the arachnoid is the is a very thin middle layer so if you see here also the yellow colored layer is the thinnest one and this pia mater that is the innermost layer is in contact with the brain tissue so these are the tissues of the brain so the pia mater is in direct is directly in touch with the brain tissues right so these are the meninges next are the brain ventricles so what are brain ventricles these are fluid filled cavities which are present in the brain now how do from where do these brain ventricles uh, are they how, from where are they formed now uh, in the in a baby not even baby in the embryo so inside a pregnant woman's womb the when the embryo develops there is a neural tube which develops so that embryonic neural tube later becomes the brain ventricles in adults 
So brain ventricles are those cavities which are filled with some fluid and these are the site for production of the cerebrospinal fluid that is the fluid which fills all the empty spaces or all the cavities inside the brain. So that fluid is formed actually in, at, at these brain ventricles. So if you look at this, you can actually see what are the brain ventricles. There are two lateral, there are two lateral ventricles. There is a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle. So where are the ventricles? So here you can see these are the ventricles. So these are the ventricles. So how many ventricles do, do we have? So there are two lateral ventricles which are located laterally. There are two lateral ventricles. There is a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle. So these are the fluid filled cavities which are present. So just now, now these are seen, these ventricles are seen in the forebrain and the brain stem. Now what is a forebrain and what is a brain stem? We will get to know a little later. We will talk about the parts of the brain, the overall parts of the brain. So let us talk about the fluid which fills all the empty spaces in the brain that is known as the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. This is the fluid which fills the space between the meninges and the ventricles. So all the empty spaces in between the meninges and the ventricles is filled by the cerebrospinal fluid and it is produced in the brain ventricles. What is their function? It provides protection. How can it provide protection? Because if the, the empty spaces are filled with fluid, it actually provides a cushion-like or a pad-like uh, protection to the internal tissues and that is how it ensures protection. Secondly, it helps in buoyancy. What do we mean by buoyancy? Now the brain is being immersed in a fluid, the net weight is reduced. Now as I said that the weight of the brain is approximately 1.3 kgs. Now, please uh, try to remember the Archimedes principle on buoyancy, which says that when a body is immersed in a fluid, then the apparent weight of the body appears to be lesser than its actual weight. And that is because the apparent weight becomes equal to the actual weight minus the buoyant force because there is whenever you immerse an object in a fluid let us suppose there is a fluid and you immerse this object in the fluid so what will happen this the weight this object weight will be in the downward direction but at the same time there will be a buoyant force acting in the upward direction so this buoyant force will tend to reduce the actual weight of the body and so and this buoyant force is actually equal to the weight of the fluid being displaced by this object so let us suppose this is the this much is the uh, object so this it, it is actually trying to find space for itself by displace by displacing some amount of fluid so the weight of the fluid displaced will be equal to the buoyant force experienced by the object so similar is the case with the brain brain is like that object which is immersed in a fluid and that fluid is the cerebrospinal fluid so as a result the apparent weight of the brain gets reduced by some amount right so that is another advantage of the presence of the cerebrospinal fluid next is excretion now the cerebrospinal fluid has a speciality that it can flow unidirectionally. It, can, it has only one way flow. So one way flow of this fluid takes away all the wastes from the brain. So this fluid flows from the brain to the blood. So it carries away all the waste materials from the brain and throws it out into the blood. And then the blood will uh, take it away and excrete it in the uh, required way. So that is how it also helps in the process of excretion. Now these are the uh, some of the important parts of the brain. And if you if you look at them, most of them, I mean these are basically those parts of the brain which ensure protection to the brain. First of all, skull, which is a covering to ensure protection. Next is the meninges, which are again additional layers of tissues for additional protection. Third is the cerebrospinal fluid, which 
again since it is a fluid it helps to give a cushion like feeling and that's how it enable i mean provides protection and the fourth is the brain ventricles where the cerebrospinal fluid is produced so we have discussed about all the uh, all all those parts of the brain which ensure protection of the brain thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.